Time to buy or sell lean hogs. First off, read this disclaimer carefully and do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So we go to natural resources and this is in the meats uh, category. Uh, so you have lean hogs here, uh, a 36% move from the low and the perfect clean minus 20% correction, which is, which is like technically uh, the definition of a bear market. When we jump here into uh, the charts, uh, we will look at lean hogs futures as far as analysis goes, but there is also a lean hogs ETF under the ticker hogs. So weekly data points are in front of us and this is you now the big, big picture. And if you look at the time cycles, even when we go back here to 1976, rise, decline, rise, decline, rise, decline. Here it wasn't a perfect m m match, but here the time cycle starts repeating and uh, nice rise, decline, rise, decline, rise, decline. So for decades, these small time cycles have had a you know clear tendency to actually play themselves out even here recently and here as well and we are currently part of this uh, rising phase now something that is pretty apparent when you look here at you know how lean hogs trades it is very erratic up down up down up down and you can see very clearly it's like this you know it's very 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 erratic uh, that is uh, how just how some um, securities uh, trade. And when when we look at what's happening right here and right now, then we do see something rather interesting. We are testing the blue 100 week moving average. It's been support here, as you can see multiple times in the past, but it can also become pretty clear resistance as shown with these red arrows. I think that we could give the benefit of the doubt to the bulls. Um, I mean, when we draw in this, you know, head and head and shoulders pattern, I think it is pretty clear. So, yeah. But for uh, um, you know, a head and shoulders pattern to be fully formed, you do indeed need that right shoulder, and the initial part of the right shoulder is a rally. So you have you know multiple uh, arguments here for a more bullish take. You have moving average support, and below us we also have the very important red 200 week moving average, which has been important in the past. So there's a bunch of support. You could also make the case that we have some horizontal support, le support levels. So let's draw that in. So here are some uh, interesting uh, horizontal support uh, levels as well. When we go here to the daily data points, um, it's a bit of a, well, it's the same chart, but the story is a bit different. We do have some very clear resistance here from the 20 day moving average. Um, we are fighting it a bit vigorously though. Uh, there's been many attempts to break through and we did have a very modest breakthrough here on Friday. Nothing to write home about, but at least we did break out uh, above. When we look at these other indicators, RSI is at a low level that historically at the weekly data points tends to form some temporary lows. Uh, looking way back here, you see that the vast majority of the time we do uh, spend uh, time in the uh, significantly above the current RSI level. And given that this uh, commodity moves very erratically, as we have seen up and down, up and down, uh, this is one of those uh, that has a good track record of offering gains when you buy at uh, the lows. Looking at the MACD, we also have a very low level that has a tendency to be, be to be bought. The previous time we were at this low level, if, if we zoom in a bit here, that formed this key low back here. When we go further back, we had a low on the MACD and that formed this key low. When we look here at um, accumulation distribution, even though we have seen a sell-off, we haven't seen any dramatic weakness in accumulation, which is very interesting. Uh, with the PPOs, we also have the, the message that uh, we are at a low level that has a tendency to be bought. 
when it comes to the daily data points, we have, uh, especially when it, uh, we look at the longer term moving averages, like the blue 100 day and the 200 day moving average in red, then we do have these low readings that has a tendency to, to result in uh, lows being formed. Now let's look at correlations. Uh, we do have a 67% positive with the S&P 500 long term. Uh, we have uh, an 11% with the livestock ETF, cow is the ticker. Now uh, we only have a 23% correlation here with the hogs ETF. Um, so that that is low, that is a very low correlation. Uh, it, especially given that, uh, you know, we expected that, well, we it should be higher, you know, when uh, we are talking about, you know, these kinds of, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's look at, you know, uh, the shorter term correlations. Okay, so in this instance, we do have a minus 77% with the S&P 500, 73-ish percent with uh, the livestock ETF. Uh, here we do jump up to a 73% positive with the uh, hogs ETF, which um, it is on the lower end of the spectrum, you know, given that it is supposed, you know, to track lean hogs futures. Ideally, we want at least 90%, but uh, there's no other alternative, really. Uh, the livestock ETF, you know, cow is broader. Uh, so if you do not want to get into the futures market, then uh, the hog CTF is basically the option you have. Um, so there is some tracking error with um, with the hogs ETF, yeah. Okay, uh, and there's a 81% ne negative correlation with the dollar index. So strongly negative with uh, the dollar. I think that when we look here at you know, the seasonality, this is a uh, livestock seasonality over the last five years uh, november is uh, strong the last 10 years november is very strong and the last 20 years november is the strongest month though december is weak then january is strong so taking november december and january together we could make a bullish case for uh, the seasonality of livestock yeah there was a decent correlation with lean hogs so yeah I think that when we take it all together, the technical, um, uh, the seasonality, and also, you know, the bigger macro picture, we could make a decently bullish case here for lean hogs.